the western edge of Kenya, home to some of the most isolated people in the world. There's little hint of the 21st century here. Elders like this woman still wear animal skin. The Turkana people have inhabited this region for four centuries. Life hasn't changed much since. This woman holds the youngest of her four children. The child's birth and every other important event in her life is marked by a new necklace. Men cover their heads with red mud and add ostrich feathers for decoration. The Turkanas are respected as fierce, proud warriors. It's just as well since every day they have to battle against their hostile environment, searching for food and water. The landscape is bleak, nothing for miles but dry air, sand and wind. Without modern healthcare, diseases like malaria and dysentery still kill. When I'm sick, sometimes I get the chance to go to Nairobi for treatment, but I can't leave my mother alone because of illness. This Takana homestead supports two men, four women, and their children. They were all born here, and no one knows how old they are or how long they've lived in this ancient desert where their ancestors are buried. <laughs> The Rift Valley was created 70 million years ago when the Earth's crust bulged, buckled and broke. It's known as the cradle of humankind. The Earth's eruptions created an impressive system of crossing folds and forts. The landscape includes volcanoes falling into lakes and seemingly never-ending stretches of desert. When the Earth opened millions of years ago, sediments came to the surface. Sand rich in bones and bits of stone tools used by man's earliest ancestors, the hominids. So it's not such a surprise to find archaeologists excavating remains from our ancient history. Here on this side of the lake, what is really uh, interesting and uh, exciting is that it's totally unusual and it doesn't exist anywhere else is that you have uh, uh, a range of sites uh, between 2.3 million years and 0 0.7 million years, which, is, which means that you can follow the evolution. Hélène Roche is one of the most respected archaeologists in the world and has spent the last 50 years filming a tiny portion of this desert for clues to our past. We found some hammer stones, which were the, the stones with uh, which they were hammering the stones. And when I get that in my hand, 2.3 million years after it has been used by hominid, well, I really feel something, of course, yes. <laughs> Their aim is to find evidence along the shores of Lake Tukana of our ancestors' technical capacities. To the untrained eye, they could be searching for diamonds. Not to miss a single precious morsel. They use pencils, spades and pipes to carefully extract what were tools, either core stones or flakes. The sharpness and shape of the stone distinguishes the artifacts from vulgar pebbles. The ancient artisans used larger stones to break smaller ones into flakes, which could be used as tools. The first sign of technology. A nice one, big flake. Uh, big, not that big, but a flake anyway. The workers are careful not to miss a single clue. These are the oldest stones to be cut into tools ever found. They mark the beginning of human engineering and are evidence of the hominid's intelligence. This year, only three to six square meters were searched. Work has to be done meticulously, and that takes time. Because of Tokana's harsh climate, researchers can only dig three months of the year, June to August. People working by choice in 45 degree temperatures must be a curious sight for a lone Turkana tribesman shepherding his flock. Back at the campsite, Roche confers with Sandrine Pratt, a paleontologist on the team. As at the dig, each piece is carefully numbered and ordered so the archaeologists can know where they were found, how deep in the soil and how far from other pieces. The excavated stones and fossils are cleaned carefully with toothbrushes and dentists' tools. They're then marked and classified for further lab analysis in Nairobi. Sandrine Pratt is pleased with the surprising find, a tooth 2.3 million years old, which seems to have come from a different hominid species than the one previously thought to live in Turkana. 
So this is uh, Mola. Uh, can you keep it like this for a second? Yeah. On the edge of the camp, a Turkana man observes the strange occupations of these bone and stone hunters. It's a world away from Nairobi, where the laboratory work will begin. Roche will do most of the work here. A few items will be sent abroad for more technical analysis. But the myriad classified bags with hundreds of stones and fossils remains the property of the state of Kenya. Uh, Roche believes her research will further prove the theory that technology began much earlier in prehistory than archaeologists have thought. Toutes les découvertes anthropologiques qu'on a fait, en paléoanthropologie qu'on a fait, c'est les dernières années. Et puis, euh, celles qu'on a faites, les sites archéologiques qu'on a fouillées, les sites archéologiques qu'on a fouillées, c'est dans la même période de temps. Euh, That's to say, on our side, we have succeeded in showing a certain diversity, a certain variability in working patterns, in operating speeds, in ways of cutting the sites belonging to the same temporal period. And then, effectively, from the paleoanthropological point of view, more diversity, a greater complexity than it used to appear previously, 10 or 15 years ago que ce qu'on avait, enfin, de ce qui semblait apparent euh, il y a 10 ou 15 ans. Other archaeologists have turned up treasures at Turkana which have forced a rethink of evolution. Scientists now believe they were not all descended from one hominid or early human. They believe at least two different types of hominids lived at the same time, so the evolutionary line begins to look more like a bush than a tree. It confirms the diversity in the human record, which is it, it just makes sense, and it's something that one's always wondered why we hadn't found it before. Um, and I think the more specimens that we find earlier in time, the more diversity we'll, we'll find. So for, for that, in that sense, it was satisfying for me because it, it, it showed you know, that there is diversity going back in time. May Bleakie discovered the skull of a new species of hominid on the western side of Lake Turkana three years ago. But she says the current inhabitants don't seem to be benefiting from the archaeological treasure trail. I feel that the people there are rather neglected in terms of the history of Kenya because they, they are so remote and, and many people, if you talk to people in Nairobi, they, they, they haven't been to Turkana and they, they can't imagine what it's like. Um, and, I, and I feel that, that they the, the people have a very, very hard life, and they are very marginalized in terms of, of the development of Kenya generally. These men on the shores of Lake Turkana have recently turned to fishing. With cattle rustling and endangering the nomadic lifestyle, they've had to acquire new skills in the 21st century, just as the early hominids who lived on the shores of this desert lake millions of years ago learned new skills and fashion and tools. As archaeologists dig deeper along the shores of Lake Turkana, it won't come as a surprise that the land yields more examples of diversity among hominids in the years to come. <laughs>